Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your relationship without your man's conscious effort so that you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today we're talking about what to do when your husband doesn't love you. I'm going to share three secrets that can quickly turn the breakdown of feeling like your husband doesn't love you into a breakthrough. My guest, Joe's husband, was working two full-time jobs and never had time for her. He kept his distance from Joe as much as possible, and she was exhausted from the burden of running their three businesses, and they were living like roommates and business partners with no physical or romantic connection. But today, she's married to a man who can't do enough to please her. He takes her on romantic trips and wows her. She truly knows her husband is crazy about her, and it's the same man. She's going to tell us exactly what she did to cause that incredible transformation. Then I'll be giving out the award for the worst relationship advice of the week, which you hear a lot as the reason a couple ends their relationship. And the implication is that this could happen to anybody, and then you would just have to break up or get divorced. But that is not the case. All that is coming up. But first, let's talk about what to do when your husband doesn't love you. Because when your husband actually says the words, I don't love you, the hurt comes in waves. I mean, first there's shock and bewilderment. And your mind races with questions like, how did this happen? How long has he felt this way? And then there's the terror. What does this mean for our future? What does this mean for our marriage? What about our kids? And then there's deep, deep hurt. He doesn't love you. Does it mean you're unlovable? Making that immense pain stop becomes your imperative. You feel the urge to protect yourself with aloofness or insult. It's just human nature. Flinging some hurtful arrows his way, it seems not only justified, but necessary. But the words, I don't love you, can be the breakdown before the breakthrough. They can be the gateway to a marriage that exceeds your imagination where you feel as loved and connected as you did when you were first dating. And you can have all of that with the guy who just said he didn't love you or is acting like he doesn't. Here are three secrets for getting from here to there. Number one, what he's really saying is I don't feel respected. I haven't for a long time. I know he's saying he doesn't love you, but it's not true. He does love you. When he committed to you for life above all others, it was because he was crazy about you. And that didn't just stop, but it can definitely be obscured when he's been without oxygen for a long time. And when I say oxygen, I mean respect. And the problem is, If you try to reason with him or point out that he's not being rational, he will feel further disrespected. That's like slapping his back when he's got a bad sunburn. If you beg and cry, that's a reminder of a huge pain point, which he hasn't felt like he could make you happy. Here you are, crying some more, driving that point home. You've probably already tried both of those responses, and that's okay. That's just human too. You didn't know he had a terrible sunburn. But you'll want to stop slapping him on the back as soon as you can and instead learn what respect looks like to him and treat him that way. And no one ever showed you what respect looks like before, so how were you supposed to know, right? But that ends today, right now. Secret number two, he's not saying that he doesn't love you to punish you or to hurt you. When he says something That sounds so hurtful, like, I don't love you. It's tempting to think that he's purposely being a mean jerk. It's human nature to personalize it and make it about you, but that's that's simply not what's happening. Of course it hurts. I get that. It feels awful. But consider that if someone cuts you off in traffic, that's also upsetting. It can make you angry. You might think the driver is also a mean jerk, but that driver isn't trying to hurt you at all. He just... Forgot to check his blind spot. He was about to miss the exit. He had no intention of punishing you. He didn't plot to get up in the morning and be at that spot where you were so he could make you slam on the brakes. Granted, a conversation about love between a husband and wife is much more personal. But in some ways, it's no different. He's just hurting and trying to get what he needs. He's not trying to make you suffer. He's not his best self right now. 
People need love the most when they deserve it the least. He's sounding the alarm that something is very wrong. He's telling you there's a very big breakdown. And instead of hearing there's something wrong with you or something wrong with him, consider just hearing that there's an urgent situation that needs to be addressed. It's going to take your best efforts to solve it. But it is solvable. Here's what you need to solve it is secret number three. Respect is a decision just like love. I used to think of respect as something that was earned. You know, and after seeing my husband screw up a number of times, I just didn't see how I could be respectful. But if you flip that around and think about your husband withdrawing his love because you weren't perfect, well, it sounds pretty unreasonable and harsh that way, doesn't it? And just as you want to be loved, even if you overspend or gain weight, because you are still lovable, of course, you could decide to treat your husband respectfully, even if he doesn't seem to deserve it. When you do treat him respectfully, it's going to feel very strange if you've been out of the habit. At least it did for me. It felt scary and false. But it was like a miracle cure for all that was ailing in my marriage. And I see that happen for the women I work with too. It just takes a little while to get the hang of what it looks like. And then it also takes a little while for him to get the memo that he's safe with you, that he can get oxygen when he's with you. It's not too late when he says he doesn't love you. It's not hopeless. If anything, I see marriages turn around from this painful conversation so often that I tend to think of it as the beginning of the breakthrough. You can choose how this story ends. You may think it's up to him that you don't have the power. And it's true you can't control what he's going to do. But you have more power than you think because when you restore the respect, his feelings of love re-emerge too, as strong as ever. Crisis and opportunity travel together. His hurtful words are opportunity knocking, telling you there's a chance to grow and be happier. How will you answer? My guest Joe is going to share exactly how she responded to the crisis in her marriage coming up. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at getcherished.com. Go to getcherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. My guest Joe's husband was working two full-time jobs and never had time for her. His clients and colleagues got his undivided attention while she was home alone. He didn't help around the house, the yard, or with the dogs. He kept his distance from Joe as much as possible, left all of the office duties on her shoulder, and she was exhausted from the burden of running their three businesses. He was stubborn and unreasonable and wasn't willing to accept her helpful advice even when it came to serious matters like his health or their finances. He was a poor communicator, and they were living like roommates and business partners with no physical or romantic connection. She felt hopeless and alone, and with each attempt to do more, things seemed to get worse. But today, she's married to a man who can't do enough to please her and takes her on romantic trips and wows her, and she's going to tell us exactly how she did that. Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, Joe. Thanks for being here today. Thanks so much, Laura. It's my pleasure and honor. So take us back to the beginning. What was it like in the bad old days? Oh, it's hard to go back there. Just hearing you read that intro um, was a, a reminder. I was lonely. I was exhausted. Um, it was so crazy. I was so confused because I had had this uh, marriage, this romance that was like movie worthy, for real. People could not believe this amazing man I found and how we connected and how we had so much fun together. We got engaged quickly. And I found myself alone, you know, night after night, day after day, um, no connection. I was running, if you had said, I was running our three businesses, doing all the finances, taking care of the home, taking care of the dogs, the yard, everything. I was exhausted. I was getting bitter and resentful. You know, where, where was he? Where was this man that I fell in love with? And even the partnership and, and um, um, roommate status that I talked about, 
that probably was even putting it uh, more positively than it was. You know, we were still in the same home, but it was rare that I saw him. He would sneak into the house at night, you know, to get some sleep a few hours that he was getting. Um, so he, he was, was avoiding just, you. Yeah. Yeah. Was, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, and was there a moment you said, okay, we can't go on like this? Yeah. I mean, I just, I, I would cry and cry myself to sleep because I was going to bed in a, you know, in a lonely home with the dogs, you know, so I definitely um, had done work for myself. I'd read some books. I'd done some classes, Bible studies, and nothing worked. You know, I was sharing what I had learned. And the more I tried, the worse things got. And so I kind of just gave up and thought, this is, I guess, where we're at. You know, we're just going to have to trudge through. And this is what my marriage is doomed to. But so, yeah. what, kinds of, what kinds of things were you trying from the Bible studies and various sources? Um, I mean, I, I had done, you know, some of the powerful books that are out there, Love and Respect, um, which was beautiful, except for I didn't understand it. In fact, our wedding theme was Love and Respect. You know, I was a respectful wife. I thought I was being respectful. And he was a loving husband. And that changed, you know, after the vows were said and, and um, we got into our married life. And so that's what was so hard. But yeah, I had done Bible study studies on boundaries, you know, and I kept reading them and thinking, yeah, if only he, if only he would love me, if only he would have good boundaries, if only, you know, so it was hard. And listening to messages even from my pastors at church. And I thought, oh gosh, if he was sitting here next to me, if only he could just get this. Um, so I had done lots of reading and lots of listening and lots of studying. And like I said, things kept getting worse and he kept getting more distant. And as I shared my bits of piece, bits and pieces on how to help our marriage grow closer and more connected, he wanted nothing to do with it. He pushed back harder. And so you did eventually start entertaining thoughts like maybe this marriage, there's something, it's not going to work. Like we, we um, have to be divorced. I didn't actually think that. I wanted my marriage no matter what, because I knew that divorce wasn't for me. When I said I do at that altar, I meant it. And that's why I thought, well, I guess I'll just be stuck in the, you know, horrible marriage. You know, and I, I was, I just didn't know what to do. So I did start um, doing, you know, some Googling on Facebook and I never really found anything or I'm Googling on Google. And then on Facebook one day, um, you popped up. I always say that you, you were stalking me and you found me. Yes, I did. Um, and so I was intrigued because uh, the video that I saw was nothing like the classes I had taken, the books I had read. You were sharing so vulnerably and I connected immediately. And I was so drawn into your video that was out at the time. And so what did you do first? First, I like became a um, college uh, graduate, like needing to suck in all the information as possible. So I ordered your book and I started reading and I actually joined your, what at the time was your VIP program. And I was watching, like binge watching the modules and reading the books. And I um, downloaded and printed off your workbooks and I was trying to get all of it into my head and I was, I could not believe it. Like, who was this woman? She has video cameras in my house. She knows exactly what's going on. The words that she's talking about come out of my mouth on a regular basis um, or used to when I used to talk to my husband. And thankfully, we did have a trip in place uh, with my husband's family. And so I was downloading all these workbooks and stuff to take with me, hoping that I could continue my reading while we were on this vacation take away some time for myself. So I first just got all this information into me. And the first actual thing that I got to do with my husband was apologize. And it was so powerful. Um, we were at this rental home with uh, the entire family. And women, we had gotten together, the women in my family, and we do what women seemingly do. We joke about our husbands. We use our, our put downs and call them like, you know, like, oh, gosh, I, you know, if it wasn't for me, we would have missed the flight or I don't know how he's what he's going to wear because I didn't help him pack this time or whatever. Things that women often do to 
bond or whatever it is, you know, put our men down. And I, for the first time in my whole entire marriage, didn't participate. Because I had just gotten all this information downloaded into my brain from your videos and your book, I stood back from a completely different perspective. And I saw that it was actually very emasculating to our husbands. And I kept quiet. And my husband and his uh, brother and father walked through. They didn't stop, but they're not deaf, you know, so I know they heard it. And shortly after that, I went down to the room my husband and I were staying in. And he came down and I apologized. And I just said to him, I apologize for being disrespectful all the times I participate in conversations like that which you just walked through. And that's all I said. And for the first time in years, he looked at my eyes and he had a tear in his eyes and he said, thank you. That means so much to me. And I knew like this was literally a week, Laura, after finding you. A week. And I got to use this powerful apology and I saw hope. For the first time that my marriage could be different, it wasn't doomed to the horrible place it had been. Wow. Powerful story, Joe. Did yeah. you expect that reaction from him? I didn't. I did not expect it, but I just wanted to um, acknowledge what I now knew, that I had been wrong. I thought I was being a respectful wife, and whoa, I had a lot to learn and a lot to clean up. So and that was my starting point. So humble and accountable. So um, so what happened from there? Well, of course, I was on vacation, so self-care was beautiful. <laughs> and our trip was amazing. We were the only couple in the whole group that didn't fight the whole trip. And um, then I went home and kind of let the self-care fall by the wayside, you know, um, just like many women, I didn't understand that, you know, eating a bit of chocolate, having some coffee, getting a manicure, pedicure, and having my hair done was going to fix my marriage. So I was on to the next chapters. Give me the next skill. Come on, Laura. I need the good stuff. You know, I need a big transformation. And as good as things were on the trip, they kind of slowed down again. And I was like, what's wrong? Oh, must have been a fluke, you know, must have been a one-time reaction. And so I just dove back in and really worked on self-care because I said, I have to find happiness no matter what happens. And so I started filling my calendar with um, coffee dates with friends and my sisters, um, which I hadn't done before. I was sitting at home lonely, you know, sitting in a pity party. I was going to local activities and crafts and having fun. and and also gratitude became a very important part of my life. I've always been very filled with gratitude, but I never shared my gratitude with my husband. I had so much gratitude with him and for him, but I shared it with my sisters and my mom and my coworkers. They heard all about how grateful I was for him, but he didn't. So I finally, on your, you know, your advice, started sharing that with him and telling him one, two, three times a day. And he, it was amazing. Like his, um, the way that he was coming into our home changed. Like his head, instead of his head being down and turned away from me, trying to avoid me, he was now looking, you know, tall, standing taller and looking me in the eyes and waiting for something. And I would tell him how grateful I was for the hard work he was doing. You know, I understood what, what a powerful provider he was and how I, and how I was so thankful that he was so dedicated to his work, to his clients, to his colleagues. And um, I was so grateful for the time that we did have together. And it was amazing because the gratitude um, was returned to me. And he would start saying things like, well, thank you for always having the laundry done. Thank Aww. you for always making the bed. So it was just very nice. You know, I, I started having some conversations and softening and a little bit more connection in my home. So, and you were thanking him for his attention to his colleagues and his customers, even though you previously said that they got all of his time and you didn't. So this was kind of an area of, was this an area of resentment, would you say? Very much so. Yeah. So how did you, how did you find the place to be grateful about that? Um, I, I just kind of started looking for what qualities do I want in a husband? 
you know, and I, and, and I knew they were there. I had just lost sight of them through all my complaining. You know, I was complaining. He's never around. He's always with them. And so I flipped that in my head and I was like, gosh, he's really dedicated to his business. He really wants to become successful. He really, you know, and he really is a provider. He wants to give me and, you know, my, myself and him the life that we um, have dreamt about together. And so I just put the focus on those qualities that he was giving, not necessarily to me at the time, to his colleagues and his clients. So wow. sounds like he was starving for that in a way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, was there a moment when you said, okay, this is, we're somewhere different than we started out. This is a change. Well, so the, along the way, everything was kind of going baby steps here and there. And I'd take a few steps back because disrespect would come out of my mouth and, you know, or maybe I wasn't being vulnerable, but we got to the point where we were about a year into me learning the skills. By this time, I also had a coach who was a powerful, powerful instrument in my journey. She helped me see some blind spots, of course, but on this trip, and this trip was a powerful piece of our journey because I wanted to travel more. We hadn't been traveling. And so I've expressed that pure desire and my husband heard that and decided to take us on a trip in the winter. And he asked where I wanted to go. And I really didn't know. I simply said I wanted to go somewhere warm. And I relinquished control of the entire trip and he picked New Orleans, Louisiana. And I was like, oh my goodness, why would I ever want to go? It's not where I ever wanted to go to, ever. I never would have picked it. Oh, you weren't, you weren't excited about this destination? Oh. Well, I was excited about the trip, not the destination. Okay. And I was just like, okay, you know what? This program has been working. This is not going to fail me. I'm going to go. I'm going to have a blast. Doesn't matter, you know, where we're at. And it was probably the best trip that I've ever been on. He planned the most amazing um, walking tours with us, bus tours, uh, delicious food, beautiful hotel. And while we were on one of those, awesome bus tours we stopped at this I don't know I can't remember the building but some historical building in New Orleans and and everybody got to get out and take pictures it was one of our photo ops and when it was our turn my husband grabbed me and he dipped me and gave me this gigantic kiss in front of all these people and it was the first kiss that I had received in over a year And here it was in public in front of all these amazing people. And I, the first thing I did when I had a chance was share with my coach and share with my coach, you know, my coach trainees. And it was, and I got to update my Facebook profile and it was so powerful. It was just like, this works. This is working. All this hard work is paying off. And after that, we went on um, bike taxi rides and he wrapped his arms around me. Uh, it was just so connecting. We were, like I said, we were in New Orleans, and it was the first year that they did the broadcast for the Florida Lee to drop. And so we were going to be downtown, but it was pouring rain. So instead, we got to watch it from our hotel room, you know, blocks away. Um, but instead, I got to fall asleep that night with my my husband's arms wrapped around me, super tight. And it was just, I knew that it was the perfect way to start the next year. And it was, and it was just under a year of me finding these skills. So things kept getting better and better, but that was a pivotal point where I felt secure again. I knew that we were going to be okay and that my marriage could be um, totally romantic like it was when, when I met him. Wow. Mm-hmm. Great. Great yeah. example of the changes that you were experiencing, that how it was working for you. Was there a time in that year when you thought, well, this just isn't working and I'm going to have to give up. And Yes. Um, and I honestly, I'm not sure what led to this point. I'm pretty sure that if I look back, it was probably lack of self-care. Self-care was the most important skill for me the entire way through and still is today. And when I let my self-care slide and I don't keep it a priority, I don't take care of my, myself the way I deserve and the way I need. Um, I don't show up as happy Joe. Um, and 
that was going on. And I would, I think we were about eight months after finding you. And I was, I had a coach and I was very active in the Lord Doyle community, reaching out with friends. I had a very beautiful sisterhood because I was too embarrassed to have any of that help at home. And when I reached out to someone at home, I got things like, well, when you get divorced, we'll be here for you. And that was the support I was looking for. Yeah. And they, I know they didn't mean it. You know, they love me and they were trying to be supportive. But so my surrendered wife community became my family. And my self-care was low. And I said something to my husband and he didn't answer me. And I, I got so mad. The duct tape <laughs> came flying off my mouth. And I looked at him and I said, I have spent so much time and lots of money, and lots of hard work trying to become a kinder, gentler, more respectful woman and wife. And it's not working. You're not noticing. So why should I bother? I quit. I'm done. And at this time, I had also had um, plane tickets for the Cherish for Life retreat just a few weeks away. And I was ready to be done. And I just walked away from that conversation when I told him, you're not even noticing why should I bother? And I was upset. And I, I walked back to my bedroom and I calmed down and I came back out and he looked at me and he said, who said I'm not noticing? And that was it. Oh. Yeah. And I was like, Ooh. and I felt an ouch on his part, you know, like here I was attacking him. Um, but that was, powerful for me too um previous to this i had um gotten upset with um a situation within the community and i was ready to throw it all away i was off my paper and all the coaches and you laura and everybody just stood for me and so like this fight with my husband was almost the icing on the cake to where i was going to throw it all away and everything that i had received up to this point the reconnection with my husband and all of this some of the communication i was going to be done but to hear him say who said, I'm not noticing, meant everything. I was like, ah, you know, it felt like he is noticing. And if I can just stay the course, um, yeah, it's going to be okay. And so it was. And that's what led me up to, you know, three months later, that beautiful New Orleans trip. (sighs) Grateful that I stayed. I mean, here's a long time. So and it sounds like you needed some validation that your work was paying off. Yeah, and I did have little things along the way, you know, I mean, I, the, the group, my Facebook group was make, held me so accountable, and if I'd go in and I'd have a hard day, those ladies were my cheerleaders, and they picked me up and they said, Joe, look at this, like, look at this, you see this, and it was a great place for me, too, to really, if he wasn't recognizing the gratitude I was sharing, they were, you know, those women were my cheerleaders. And I needed that because I know that I would not have been able to stick this out without that validation. You know, I mean, I waited nine months to hear from my husband, but um, they gave it to me all along. So, yeah. oh, so what would you say to yourself? What do you know now that you would tell Joe from back then? Poor Joe, who was so lonely and struggling and didn't know. What would you say to her? <clears throat> I would say um, there is a way out of this pain. And all you have to do is trust. Trust yourself, trust your husband, trust the skills, and trust the women who have done this already and have been successful. Just be open and trust. So you can always go back. I love that. You're always like, you don't have to do this. Just, yeah. you know, just give it a try. And I'm so grateful that I did that. You know, and so that's what I would tell other women or, you know. Just trust. There is a way. Give it a try. And what's your tip for a woman who's feeling just like you felt, where it's just a roommate, he's avoiding you, it's endlessly painful? What's your tip for her? My tip um, would be to definitely know that you're not alone. You know, push those lies aside and reach out. Get that roadmap that is available. Um, There's a whole amazing community of women standing for your greatness standing here ready to encourage love you support you 
and get you to that amazing marriage, that romantic marriage that you that you dream of, that you want. When you're standing at the altar saying I do, it's it's possible. Well, and tell us about that. What's your marriage like now? My marriage now is incredible. Of course, it's not perfect. And um, uh, that, you know, I'll send that postcard to you, Laura, when that happens. But um, <laughs> but my, we go on vacations. We, we go on nice, big, long vacations. But we also just take little trips around our state and around my um, community. And my husband buys me beautiful gifts. And one of the recent excite, exciting surprises that he gave to me was on our last anniversary and I wasn't expecting anything more than just a simple dinner because we did have another large trip planned two weeks later and so I thought we were just going to go out to dinner and have a nice you know evening and instead my husband picks me up on the motorcycle which is always fun it was a beautiful fall day and he took me to my favorite restaurant and we had my favorite meal and then we were driving along the river and he was like oh I have to go to the bathroom. Do you mind if we stop by, you know, the airport or the um, executive air taxi? And he's got friends there. And I was like, sure, we can stop there. And we stopped. And I went in and went to the bathroom, too. And we talked to um, one of his friends who's a pilot. And he's like, are you ready? And I'm like, yeah, let's go. Thinking home. And he's like, no, we're going on a on a ride. And I was like, what? And so he had booked a beautiful sun um, set private plane ride for us. And the pilot took us out over... It's beautiful. Not that we also have, we have the river here, which is gorgeous. But he also took us to the largest lake in the state, and we sat over the lake during sunset. And when I stepped into that plane, though, hanging on my steering wheel—I don't know what it's called in the plane—was <laughs> a beautiful three stone necklace. And I honestly thought someone forgot it in the plane before, and so I didn't say anything. And as we are sitting watching the sunlight or sunset oh sunlight glowing on the lake I was like gosh this poor lady like is missing this necklace so I said something to the pilot and I'm like this gorgeous sunset is so pretty and it's hitting this necklace you know so beautifully and he's like that's yours and my <laughs> husband was like I can't believe you didn't say anything and I'm like oh and he said yeah three stones I love you then I love you now and I'll love you forever and it's oh. so beautiful. I have it on today. Um, I wear it all the time. It is. Um, but that's, yeah. Those are the kinds of things that, you know, my husband does. He cooks meals for me. I'm not home alone. Sometimes I actually have to sneak out of my house to get my own quiet. Um, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> He's around so much now that you have to leave if you want yes. to get some solitude. Uh, yes. Before, where I almost never had him in my home, now he's home on nights and weekends. And he calls me during the day to check in and see how I'm doing. He tells me every day that I'm beautiful and how much he loves me and how much he's grateful for all that I do around our home. I'm only working, um, I'm only managing my business now, and I've cut back to very part time on that. He's managing the other businesses and our personal finances. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, when I when I need a little quiet, I sneak off to the coffee shop myself, or maybe back to my classroom by myself, so so that I can just have a little downtime. So, and yeah, these are things you only dreamed of back in yeah. the bad old days. You did. I mean, did you think this was even possible? When no, I mean, I I this is what I hoped for when I was dating my husband and when I got married. But when things were so low and I didn't have any relationship, no connection, you know, I said we were living life next to each other, but there was no connection. And I really had lost all hope. And it was, you know, I was so grateful to come across that video on Facebook and have you share your story so vulnerably. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm going to try this. And it made you, you are so transformed. And now you are also a relationship coach yeah. and you help other women. You stand for other women's marriages. And, yeah. and how does that impact your relationship? It keeps me accountable. It keeps me happy. And it, it's just so encouraging to be able to share, like you said, my transformation with other women and, and, and let them know that I know it's possible because I've done it. 
I know that um, the skills are really simple and it's not easy, you know, but it's so worth it. The time, the, the um, changing my brain, <laughs> you know, from what society thought I was supposed to do and, and what I thought respect looked like. I had no idea what respect looked like until I found your skills and had you, you know, give me some powerful cheat phrases and, and um, walk through that. Yeah. So yeah. Well, your story is amazing, Joe, and I uh, just admire your courage and commitment to standing for that marriage, even though it seemed com- you didn't think there was a chance that you could be where you are now. You hung in there anyway, and uh, that's very inspiring. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming on and sharing all these details. They're not easy to share. Like you said, it's hard to go back to the old pain. And um, what what has you be willing to share that with us? I like I said, like I said earlier on, it's hard to go back to that pain, and I don't want to go there um, again uh, physically. And I see so many women around me that are suffering. And if I can help, if my story can inspire or help or lead one woman to find hope, uh, support, and encouragement to get herself out of that pain. It's all worth it. It's so worth it to just be reminded of, yeah, things were really bad. You know, here I was trying to drag my husband to the psychiatrist's office because something was wrong with him. You know, he he was so broken and so messed up and he wasn't listening to me. And I was in so much pain and thought, you know, oh, what am I going to do with this man? <laughs> And now I'm like, what am I doing with this man? He's so amazing, you know? There's nothing wrong with him. <laughs> and, and honestly, Laura, too, the thing, the, the thing that's probably the most powerful for me is as hard as that place was, I realized that my husband wasn't willing to accept someone less than he um, asked to marry him. And I had become someone much less. I had become disrespectful and I had become controlling. I didn't know it. And so the way he was responding to me um, helped me to get back to the woman I've always wanted to be. I'd lost my way. And so his uh, response, you know, kind of woke me up and I got to find you and and, uh, take on a whole new perspective. So it's worth that. Yeah. Well, you have definitely inspired uh, many women today with your story. And thank you so much for sharing it with us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at getcherished.com. Go to getcherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. And now it's time for the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week Award. It's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice. Yeah, it's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week. And the advice that's got me ready to blow this week is that the problems in your relationship are an indication that the two of you just grew apart. You just don't have anything in common anymore. And I remember thinking that with my husband too. But if I'm honest, it was that I had grown and he was just staying stuck as a loser pants. So saying that we grew apart was my cover for saying I grew up and he didn't, which isn't the most grown up way to look at things. Or I could say that we didn't like the same things. I like volleyball and he doesn't. He likes running marathons and I don't. So we grew apart, right? And I used to make that case in my head to whoever I was complaining to about my marriage. But I see it differently now. I mean, these days he runs while I'm playing volleyball and we both come back drunk on endorphins with lots to talk about. So it's not like you have to have the same interests to feel connected and enjoy each other's company. 
In fact, sometimes he'll be talking about his marathon training plans. And even though I don't care much about marathon training plans, it's his ideas and his voice and his face, and he's sharing them with me. And he's my beloved. And that feels very intimate. So I've come to see that the only thing we really need to have in common is each other. And feeling like you've grown apart just means that you're feeling hurt and you're not getting what you need. And that's a lousy feeling and no one should have to live like that. That is not right. But having someone tell you that maybe you just grew apart is not going to get the medicine where the trouble is. And for that reason, the advice that your relationship problems are because you've grown apart is the worst advice I've heard all week. Be sure to listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, I'll show you what to do if your man has low self-esteem. I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that of the four of us kids, my sister Hannah was the white sheep of the family. Mm -hmm.